hope everybody's ready to go deep down in the rabbit hole today. Some people might not like this, some people might love this, but we all need to hear it. Just hang on tight and hang in there with us, because we're going there. Social media gardening. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds. And must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens podcast, where we talk about all things gardening and give the information out for you to be successful in your garden, whether it's your first or your last. We are your hosts, Ben, the backyard gardener, and Batavia, the front yard gardener. One in the country. One in the city. And this podcast is a companion podcast to the upcoming documentary, Backyard Gardens, a documentary about two families growing food for the first time in a world that lacks nutrition. All right, before we get started, I just want everybody to know, check us out on Backyard Gardens Pod on Instagram and Backyard Gardens on YouTube so you can see our beautiful shining gardening faces every week. Sun kiss. So what the hell yeah. <laughs> what the hell is a social garden in Batavia? Come on now. Yeah, right? Like social media gardening is gardening that uh, when you go out to water your plants, instead of watering them for five minutes, you spend twenty minutes because you're watering and taking selfies. Oh, I thought we were talking about something different. Oh, what different Okay, on to the next episode. (laughs) (laughs) What's social media gardening for you? Uh, The effect of social media on gardening. It's all, wait, it's all wrapped up in it. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, I know, (laughs) I know. such a silly gun. So when you go out and you go, um, you start gardening, do you get wrapped up in taking selfies? Absolutely, I do. Um, but you know really? what? Yeah, you know what? I don't post a lot of them though, right? I actually took a series, did a whole portfolio um, recently, and um, I have to be past all of the real work for the gardening. So selfies are a thing, right? And I need to get the proper angle, the proper lighting. Uh, so I may spend a couple of extra minutes, but that's not something I do daily. Um, when I'm capturing things in the garden that I want to share that, you know, probably doesn't have my face in it. I mean, it's like one shot, two shot, and then I'm moving on. So I have a bunch of pictures in my phone that I never share anywhere. You know, a lot of them are for me. Some of them are like when I sit down and have breakfast or lunch, I'll look and say, Hey, I'm going to post this. Um, there are a few, and it's probably a rarity when I'm like, Oh, I want to capture that picture this scene for you know to post you know what i'm saying Um, yeah so so yeah i mean videos are a whole different thing that's very intentional you know but yeah i don't really do that so when i and it was something that i struggled with at first Mm -hmm. but when i go out in my garden to work i go out in my garden to work Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i don't go out in my garden to take pictures for social media and stuff like that now that being said, because I'm passionate about educating people, mm-hmm. I keep my phone on me. And if something were to arise, then yes, I will pull out my phone. Yeah. But I don't let it slow me down or anything like mm-hmm. that. Um, it's, it's too much. Yeah. But, um, you know, and I usually spend time creating stuff separately. But when I go out there to like weed or something, mm-hmm. I'm not worried about selfies, you know, but I always... Well, I say I always do, but I generally have my phone around me because I'm usually listening to music or something. So if the situation arises, but I actually do not go out of my way to create anything yeah. for social media. So does that surprise you? Um, as a filmmaker, it kind of it does because it makes me think like you're <laughs> always looking for the thing to capture, right? Um, I am. I'm taking mental notes of when to come back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, you know, I don't know. Now that it's hot, though, I'm not trying to like, like, okay, so for instance, I was out there today and I was filming a, uh, my garden tour for the summer mm-hmm. oh, and yeah. one of my gardens and, um, man, it was hot, bro. Yeah, it was yeah. so hot. It, it was like a sweat dripping off of me. And every time I looked at the camera, it's like more sweat coming through my <laughs> shirt. And I was like, I was thinking to myself too. And I was like man, there's a different way to do this, but I just wanted to get it done because I had the rain was coming. It was like mega humid. Mm-hmm. 
So that's part of the reason why too. Now when it's cooler, that's a different story. But right now I try to minimize as much as possible. Yeah. So for me, you know, being an urban gardener, I'm smack dab in the middle of the city. So not only do I have your regular temps, you know, to deal with. So the weather is a thing. Um, Well, let's say the heat and sun is a thing. Right, you know, and then in particular wind, since I'm in the windy city of Chicago, and then yeah. you fold in the elements of the city. So the city wakes yeah. up on a weekday at 6 a.m., you know, and I'm an early riser, but, you know, to get out and get things filmed prior to that is a stretch. Um, so I think when I'm very intentional about filming something for, you know, YouTube really is where I'm looking to say, okay, this is some specific content. Um it's obviously that was my intention when I went out there. So that's different. And it is a challenge, right? Because I also, it's the reverse of it. I get distracted by garden things when I'm trying to film. <laughs> so, right. uh, but on the everyday garden, you know, planting and maintenance, I'll see things like you say that catch my eye and I'll try to capture it, you know, but I'm a couple of, you know, my pictures are so amateur, you know, my video is so amateur where <laughs> it, it really doesn't take too many takes for me to realize this is as good as it's going to get, you know, so, uh, but the, the heat, because in July for us is when things really heat up. I've gone out midday. And so like, this is a, this is midday hair for those that are going to watch this, you know, early morning hair is pent up and, uh, you know, bandana on going out there with midday hair (laughs) it's enough to get from the house to the car without pouring in sweat so so yeah yeah this is this is my midday hair too so you know it's becoming it's growing on me get that is it there yeah (laughs) it's your girl on somebody sorry (laughs) oh that hurts that hurts that's a low blow that's a low blow. that is that is this is the uh closing episode of batavia as a co-host for the backyard gardens podcast (laughs) on the next episode we will have i don't know but um yeah it's you know it's a trick creating for social media um but there's benefits to it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so do you want to start with the good or the bad or Um, the ugly well i want to start with the good and the good for me is the excitement about sharing a thing so i want that's where i want to start like i am you know some of these are my plant babies right you know so some of the things i'm your this is my kids first day at school kind of taking pictures and posting it so some of it's that for me um and i like to share it with people that have it in common with me so other gardeners that have seen it before um i want to share with people that don't necessarily garden like it's it's an opportunity for me to kind of say hey somebody else should see this right and even if it's not the biggest you know tomato plant in the world that doesn't so much matter to me um it's you know this kind of super cool thing this pretty thing this unique thing all of those things are the things i want to share so that's the good in it and that's very organic so you don't need to kind of profile that you know so that comes natural and it's a shot and you move on to the next kind of cool thing so that's the good for me. Yeah. Well, the good <clears throat> the good for me is the community that's on there, mm-hmm, honestly. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I know how to take pictures. I do it for a living. I do video for a living and all that stuff. And that's fine and dandy. But, man, it's something about when people come on and, you know, a lot of us are backyard gardening. Mm-hmm. Some of us are front yard gardening. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, most of us are backyard gardening. So you don't get people that just randomly come by your backyard to see what you got. Mm -hmm. So it's an opportunity for you. I don't want to say necessarily to show off, but just to to share. And then when people like comment and stuff like that, like I put a picture up um, of my Frankenstein pot. Did you see that one? The one where you were the the, uh, purple heart and the. uh, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, I don't know what to do with this mm-hmm. thing, man. Like, part of me likes it, part of me doesn't. Overwhelmingly, mm-hmm. not to mention, I believe it was Fairy Moore Seed Company. Um, they first of all said, Asymmetrical's in this year, you're in it. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, no shit, I'm apparently <laughs> in the game. 
You know, I'm, I'm on the in crowd. I you didn't are even a know trendsetter it. in the world of I gardening. I am a trendsetting mm-hmm. SOB. Wait, no, they it. call it something else. You're um, an uh, influencer. You're a garden pot influencer. Hashtag yeah, I doubt garden that. pot. But that's okay. Yeah, that's so bad. <laughs> yeah, that was bad. But... um. You know, it it was cool because a lot of people came and they said, I love it just the way it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was like, and I was like, oh, okay, you know, because this whole time I've been looking at it. And quite frankly, at this point in the season, I'm like, I ain't changing yeah, a damn yeah, thing. Yeah. But the fact that so many people had come on and say, I like it the way it is, or, you know, hey, maybe and overwhelmingly the, the, um, the consensus was put a spike plant in of some sort. I'm a big fan of the spike you know? plants. Yeah. See, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of the spike plants, but it's cool. You know, so it was overwhelmingly like they liked it. And I thought that was really cool. It's like you get a support system. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then like when somebody posts, especially when somebody posts like their first vegetables they get and they're so excited. Nope. Nope. Damn it, son. Nope. You're not going to make me cry. Eight minutes into this episode. (laughs) I'm not going to get weepy. Nope. 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 Not going to happen. It's it's just, it's heartwarming. Yeah. And then even to see the people like you and I who mm-hmm. have been gardening for years and you still get excited. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it it's hard. Like when you read the captions, it's hard to see how excited people really are. But you know they are. Yeah. yeah. And you know how y'all know they are? Because they put that shit on social media for yeah. everybody to see. Gosh, and you, that's, that's, what that's is too so much. We need it. to have someone take notes and a producer or something come back and ra- coming back around to tell us what to talk about. You unpacked quite a bit right there, you know. So I did. spikes. That's how I roll. Yeah, clearly you just set up the whole episode. <laughs> spikes. The comments I want to come back to as far as the um, the caption that people put in there and how proud they are or aren't. Uh, so just as a quick side note, I have a neighbor that's on the next block. He and his wife walk by um, now, you know, with everything that's going on. They're both at home each day so they walk by in the morning but I would normally see kind of him as he walked by to go to the train and um, every year he would ask are you adding the spikes yeah because like, that was a, like a, a you know pretty traditional design for my front yard flower bed and I got away from it the last couple of years and like the look on his face when I was like oh no not this year you know so um so yeah there's there's that that thing you mentioned though about being able to kind of have that garden exchange, you know? So yeah. I, um, I just joined social media gardening, that community last year. I've, you know, over the years right. since I've been on social media, I would, you know, share things with, you know, just my online friends, my real friends on social media and all of that stuff. But I have now. I got to gotta interrupt you real quick. Sure. You're going down a path that's going to take it from good to bad. Just so you know. Well, no, no, no. You're no, unpacking it. Go no, ahead, though. No, no, no. I'm still good, man. Um, so the next comment is taking it to bad, but that's another story. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I've shared it over the years as we have different parts of our lives, right? No big deal. It's summer. Uh, someone says, oh, I was late to see what your garden looked like, and I kept on moving, right? Post a picture and keep on moving to the next thing. Um, but last year was the first time, like, you know, I can't, you find your tribe, your garden tribe, right? Yeah. You know, um, and you you see other people experience that same joy that you do. So last year was also the first year that I did the unthinkable and started gardening in the front yard. Right. You know, so, <laughs> so when you think That's about strike it, too. Yeah, That's no, strike right, too. right. <laughs> so when you think about it for all of the years I've gardened before I had flowers in the front and I would talk to a lot of people when I planted my flowers, but that's not all like I'm, I'm doing a little bit of maintenance, but that's not all season. So you may see me once or twice a week out there. You may air quote catch me in the, you know, flower garden. Um, but all of these other years I've been kind of stowed away in the backyard and talking to neighbors on either side of me, but that's it. Right. You know, so to be able to do two things, one, get out to the front yard and that thing I get Ben and I sometimes we talk on the phone in the morning and I'll be out there and I'll tell them to hold on a second because someone's going past and you know they're commenting and I'm a chatty gal so you know I'm, I'm you chatting with them <laughs> <laughs> so I'm chatting with them in the front yard but all that said I can do that 
almost at any point throughout the day using social media. So that's the reason why that's still a part of the good for me. I can decide what I want to comment on. You know, I can decide what I want to share. It's also a way to kind of give back to that community too, to share what you've done or are doing, right? It's a contribution. And well, first of all, because of what you and I do, Mm -hmm. that's our job is Mm -hmm. to give back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like posting pretty pictures. I love taking pretty pictures. Mm-hmm. I love them. And um but I, what I really like is I like to unfold something to for people to think about. Yeah. Something for people to learn about it because you can go on the internet all you want and mm-hmm. read. Mm-hmm. But until you find out from somebody's experience, actual experience that they have done, that's when you're really going to learn something. Yeah. It's like theory. You know what I mean? Well, in theory, Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. shouldn't do this. And then you've got 400,000 other people saying, well, I I do it every year. I do it every year. It works great. I do it all the time. And you're like, okay, so in theory, so Mm -hmm. it's just one of those things. You know what I mean? Like there's something to be said about that. And people's experiences, they're, they're really good. And it's a good place to do that. Now, the not so good about Mm it. And I do feel there's a lot of not good about it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to let you kick it off. And well, just for the record, we don't know what we're going to say. So Yeah, and that was a deep sigh. So, like, there are, let me pick on my fingers where I want to start. <laughs> um, so the first thing, you know, we normally do the you go, I go. You, I, I hope we don't have many, but I think we will. So one of the first things is the, I'm going to go with the pressure that um, I believe some people experience of getting the perfect shot. You see a lot of organized vegetables on, you know, on Instagram and that takes time. Right. And so I, I, while it's great to look at, it's a form of art. I even believe Um, I 100% art. Yeah. That's 100% art. I don't want, and it's not so much for the person that is doing it because that's their thing. They've decided they wanted to do it. But I sometimes wonder about the influence it has on another gardener or another aspiring gardener, right? You know, when you talk about these bountiful harvest, you know, pounds and pounds of tomatoes and carefully placed cucumbers and like, I'm trying to figure out if I've gotten that harvest yet. There have been so many years where it's kind of like, here's a tomato, you know, (laughs) like, um, I just don't want, I'm always trying to protect folks, whether they want me to or not, when it comes to them being discouraged about gardening. And so sometimes I wonder, um, while there's always a good and a bad, if it can be discouraging for, for others, especially when they don't have kind of that level of harvest, you know, so that's one of my things. And that's it for today's show. Everybody have a good day. We will see you next time. No, (laughs) no, it's you're exactly right. And well, first, first things first. Yes, that is art Mm -hmm. when you, you know, lay out your vegetables and you write something or, you know, you make it real pretty. That's 100 percent art. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think so either. Um, The problem in lies and and I have the same issue. So I'm going to talk freely about it is within yourself Mm. it's your lack of confidence in what you're doing and your garden Mm -hmm. and the fact that you're envy about somebody else's garden you're envious Mm -hmm. and what really needs to happen is you need to take a step back yeah and you need to put your phone on mute bin Mm -hmm. and you um you need to look at your garden and say you know what i made this garden Mm -hmm. this is my vision for this year the good thing about it is you didn't just build a house. You made a garden. So next year, you're more than welcome to change your garden. Use those people as guides. Now, when you see there, so there's two things, and this is a very real comment that I'm going to make. If you are seeing people with pounds and pounds and pounds of vegetables, they could be growing a shitload of vegetables or scandalous they could be buying the damn vegetables and posting them and trying to scam you you don't know okay so don't get hung up in that situation hold on one second ben i have a technical difficulty i need to resolve and that's the good this is a good part of the episode and i don't want to miss that
All right, go on. You were saying. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So, about that. you know, if if keep that in mind, and I'm not saying that like the person out there with 400,000 followers and all that is doing that because they very well could not be, and I believe that that is a small fraction of that if even a fraction at all i don't know but there is a definite possibility but to have like huge giant um harvest is just it's not a good thing to kind of worry about because you have your own garden and if it's your first year you're gonna have another year Mm -hmm. and if it's your 10th year then you know the difference and you know what you've done so yeah Sorry about those adjustments. Um, so I, I mean, I'm pretty sure I caught most of that. Um, and I, I think that if we could go into the second thing, it kind of ties into, I think, where you were heading off or leaving off. Is it okay if I go to the next one? Um, no, okay. not really, because... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. ahead, Um, ahead. Well, I think it ties in, and I want to make it a whole brand new one versus an extension. Um, It's what's true and what isn't. You know, it's the everything that someone posts or writes on social media, everything someone comments about, every piece of advice that someone gives you for gardening it's no different than anything else on social media, right? Sometimes you got to take it with a grain of salt, you know? Um, Sometimes it's take it and build on it, research that thing further. Maybe it's a starting point. Um, I don't think that there are people out there that are intentionally giving misinformation, right? (laughs) Intentionally trying to send people to a place that's wrong. I think that people are either, there are a lot of people giving great advice, like we hope you believe Ben and I are. (laughs) There (laughs) there are some people that believe the thing that they're commenting on or saying, or the advice they're giving is true. And so they're giving it to someone else. Um, Well, hold on, hold on, mm -hmm. hold on. Break that down for a second then. So if you, you know, just because you're doing something this year Mm -hmm. doesn't make you an expert to where you need to spread that around. That being said, like everything we talk about on this show and everything I talk about on social media, and I'm sure Batavia is the same way, if not correct me. Um, I either have been doing it for years and I know, or I have a disclaimer and it's like, Hey, I'm trying this next year. You know what I mean? Like, I don't believe there is a such thing as a gardening expert. Yeah. And if you think you're a gardening expert, I think you got a real problem (laughs) because it just, it changes all the time. You know, it's always different. Everything is different. You know, I think it's like the Microsoft programs or even any kind of training. Um, And Microsoft doesn't sponsor us yet. No, they don't sponsor us. You know, it's kind of the, you know, entry level versus the intermediate versus the advanced. Like I, I'd like to look at us as gardeners is more of that, you know? So we may say beginner versus entry level, right? Um, But I think that I love saying, I've not done this before. I love saying, okay, this is my first time growing it. And it's not to let myself off of the hook. It's it's a whole bunch of different things, which we'll get into a bit later. Um, But it's a heads up for those that are watching You know, to say, hey, take this ride with me. But no, it could be a ride, right? Because this is my first time at bat. Now, there are a bunch of other things that I talk about where I don't have that caveat in in the front of whatever I'm about to say, because I've done it enough times, enough seasons, enough times for me to feel really confident about what I'm saying. And sometimes even that, and we do this back and forth on the podcast, sometimes even that deserves an asterisk because I may be talking about it in my zone, which could be different than your experience in your zone. You know? Exactly. So I, th- exactly. I think that what we talk about can be helpful, but it can't be considered the gospel, you know? Well, if you go and you talk about, if, if you're watching somebody in Texas mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you follow their advice, you will fail. It's going to be wrong mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. it's just totally different. You yeah. know what I mean? Like they're growing food in December that you're growing in June yeah. and July. But they're starting so, in July has plenty of time to mature where, 
you know, buddy, you're starting. Yeah. I, let's make it September. For me, what they're starting in September has plenty of time to mature. But we've talked about this before. I'm not starting tomato plants in my outdoor garden in September. It, no. it ain't going to happen. Um, and that's the that's a part of the if we say gift or curse, that's a part of the challenge with social media because there's so much access you know, there is. Um, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's blogs, whether it's Instagram, whether it's TikTok, whether it's Facebook, any of those places, especially in places where people are putting out videos, because it's kind of here is this information and take it. And you have I don't know how many people that I've talked to that are local to me that have referenced something that someone's done that they saw online on YouTube in particular and that person's been in California. I'm here to tell you, growing in California in the United States is very different than growing in Chicago, in Illinois, yeah. right, as a comparison. I mean, it's a big difference. And that's the thing is you, you, you have to understand that person could be telling something they've done for 50 mm -hmm, years. Mm -hmm. But because you're in a different yeah. zone, it's going to be different. So you need to apply it. And that's the thing. So like everything I get, I always confirm it. So like if I see something on social media and I'm like, okay, that's a good tip. First thing I do is I go make sure mm -hmm. that it's going to mm -hmm. work. You know, that that's, you know, if there's anything different, anything that should be tweaked and nine times out of 10, no, I say 80% of the mm -hmm. time. It's generally about mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's enough to get you through and you could definitely tweak it. But, you know, sometimes it's just totally off and you've got to be careful. Yeah. So like for me, I'm in zone eight. Right. So I can. But between zone eight and nine and ten, there are two different worlds. Now, zone eight and seven. Now we're a little bit mm -hmm, closer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So and there's some things that are very specific that are. um that are, you know, things you need to watch out for. So you and I, as we've talked, and I'm in zone 6A and you're in zone 8A. 8A. Um, so that is a hop, right? And while some of the things that we grow are the same, the times we grow them are very different. You very know? different. And so um, we share advice between the two of us but it's always with an asterisk, you know? Um, so, I mean, I think that generally speaking, the experienced gardener recognizes something they see online should be taken maybe one step further. They shouldn't just be taken as, you know, the gospel. Um, right. And that's, I'm just going to say generally online, right? Um, there are... A lot of people that aren't at that level of experience that will take that advice because that's the way it's being presented as advice, recommendations, tips, and, you know, run with it. Um, so, I mean, that that's probably, you know, whose job is it to save them, you know? And who is them? The that inexperienced person that may take that advice and then, you know, well, let, let me let me finish it. So whose job is it to save them? It's kind of crazy to even like formulate the thought of it's someone's job to save them. You know, like, um, yeah, I think that gardening can be very visual. And I think that that kind of thing draws you in. You see kind of again, going back to those big harvest or whatever. And you're like, oh, I want that thing. Let me do what that person's doing. You know, um, so that's that's the mesmerizing, hypnotizing, maybe like it's it's uh, it's tricky. Yeah, I don't think that it's necessarily somebody needs to save anybody. Mm -hmm. I think what it is is and I mean, you know, gardening is something that you need to educate. If you're serious mm -hmm. about it, you need to educate mm -hmm. yourself about it. And the first way to do it, number one thing to do is get out there and do it, do it. And then the next thing is to get a book, mm -hmm. get a book, get an old ass book. You know what I mean? And read it. And heavily you know, discounted, because, nearly free book because they're out there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Them old ass mm -hmm. books that are chock full of information. They're about you can get them used on Amazon for like mm -hmm. two bucks. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you have to remember, too. And this is a real thing. There's a thing called the social media effect mm -hmm. on people. Yeah. And what it is, is you go on social media and you see 
nothing but positive posts, positive posts, positive posts. And this goes for everything in life, but we're going to apply it to gardening. But how much of it do you see total crop failures, you know, horrible infestations, you know, any of that stuff? You don't really Mm -hmm. see that stuff. So in your mind, you're perceiving... And it's natural is like this person's garden is perfect all the time. Oh my gosh. They don't ever really have a major issue yet. You will see smaller stuff. And I do think as a whole, the gardening community community is very good about showing, you know, insects Mm -hmm. and, you know, pest damage and stuff like that. You know, I will say that I think that it is surprising. I'm I was surprised when I got into actually turned into social media, how, much it was it did show the back because if you go into filmmaking social media or because you know there's different niches sure. if you go you'd never see the bats mm-hmm. never yeah. ever ever it's always prim and polished and perfect yeah. but in the gardening you don't necessarily see that and i think that's a beautiful thing but when you see these things and they're always positive it's in your mind like hey There's nothing wrong with their garden. Why am I so bad at gardening Mm. that I have these issues? Why is it that I woke up this morning and I had a tomato hornworm? I had a cabbage worm. I had aphids. Mm -hmm. I had rabbits eating my stuff. (laughs) I had the deer eat my garden. And it's been raining for a week and some of my stuff is drowning. All my potatoes are split. Uh, What the hell is wrong with me? You know what I mean? And you're already in the midst of it too when that happens, right? You know, so. Yeah. Um, And then you go and you sit on social media and you see somebody with no issues, perceived no mm -hmm. issues. And they might have issues, but, you know. And I'm not, I I don't think that I am looking to say, oh, change the content you're sharing on social media. That's not it, right? Because I think that a part of when I started, and this goes back years, when I started actually like watching and looking and, you know, seeking out you know, gardeners online. Um, I was so motivated by the, some of the things that people were doing. Um, and that led me to say, I wonder if I could insert this. And then I'd spend, right. for me, it seems like it takes years for me to research a thing. Uh, but I spent some time looking into it, right? And it's you take one thing you see and that could expand into five or six or seven different ideas. So for me and the way my mind works, those things that I would see, all of those good things were motivating factors, right? You know, and I, maybe I wasn't as interested in seeing the things that people would share that didn't go so well because people, you know, a lot of times people don't want to deal with a problem until they have to deal with a problem. You know, it's kind of a human thing, right? Um, Sure. There's some, you know, prevention (laughs) that went back to an episode that we uh, released uh, this summer, but you can do something to try to avoid that problem. But in most cases, you know, you'll wait and see. We've talked about Japanese beetles. This is the first time I've had them in my garden this year, you know. Yep. Um, and did that, was I researching Japanese beetles before this year? No, there's no need to, you know. But now that I have them, all right, I'm looking for different ways to rid myself of that unique character. Um, yeah, you're texting me at 11 o'clock yeah, at night. Yeah, man, after my first nap, you know. <laughs> after, that's my, no, that's actually my second nap. I have a midday nap and then I have a late evening nap and then I'm back up for the day at like 10.30 p.m. 10.30 p.m. Yeah. my time or your time? Either way, it's almost, you know. It doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> I'm already asleep. Yeah, it's one of those things too. It's just, it's interesting when you think about it that way. And like I said, I have, I don't know, what do I have on Instagram? I have like 700 followers mm-hmm. or something. I don't know by the time this releases, but as a whole, all the people's stuff that I see, because you know how they put what they want in front of you, it's generally positive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there's, and a lot of people share what's wrong with it. But the thing is, is if you're going to share what's wrong and you're going to act like you know what, you, what there is to fix mm-hmm. it, then you need to tell people yeah. like help a brother yeah, out yeah. you know what i mean save us a mm-hmm, step mm-hmm. and i think that's the thing and it's it's very tricky it's a very interesting thing and this takes you down into the rabbit hole of google and what you can find on google and google images good lord yeah gone yeah so if you go google something man i mean how many different sites you get you know you get all your major sites, you know, and by far the best website that I can tell people to get any information is Spruce. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
spruce. Yeah. I remember looking the, at them years and years and years ago, and they just started, and I just stumbled back on them past couple yeah. of years, and they have like a a freaking library of information. It's amazing what they've got on there. But just doing that, you know, but if you go in, you find like this blog says this and this guy says this and this and this. I mean, you can get conflicting information all you Mm -hmm. want. And then you're going to gravitate to where it's like, okay, I have a Japanese beetle infestation. And I know that I need to do X, Y, and Z, but it seems really hard. So I want to find somebody that says something different. You can find that somebody that's going to tell you something different. I was just, uh, and that's the problem. I was just watching a uh, comedy special, and the comedian talked about the internet in Who this. Who was it? Um, uh, Aziz Anin, Anin Aziz, Aziz Anzari, yeah, Aziz Anzari, um, and he talked about how um, Tommy. Yeah, he talked. About, well, I'm telling you, <laughs> he talked about <laughs> how um, you can search for a thing you know Uh, is the backyard pod backyard gardens podcast good and there's going to be all kinds of information that you know confirms yes it is good and then you go back and you search is the backyard gardens podcast bad and there are a bunch of things you you won't find them on interweb for us but there are a bunch of things that will confirm that search you know and so it's no different in anything else right so you yeah. know and i was actually talking to my uncle today about how sometimes we just want people to confirm the thing that we want them to confirm right you know so you're looking for that information that says you can plant a tomato plant in chicago in september you know if you look hard enough you're going to find someone that did it right somebody yeah, yeah. now they're not going to tell you that that thing froze you know on october the, the 30th but hey you know no. um so, so again, there's a lot of information. It's, you know, there's, there's sites that are like the Wikipedia for gardening. It's the same thing, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Well, well, these are things that people contribute to daily. Anyone can edit it, you know, like beware. Um, but I, I believe that uh, a lot of people ask me where I um, learned a thing, like, especially in the front yard garden, a woman told me recently and I'm just saying this out loud so other people can say, oh, well, maybe she does. So she's like, well, tell me where you you learned all of this because you look so young. For those in the cheap seats, <laughs> she said. <laughs> you are fishing for compliments. <laughs> you look so young. Where did you learn all of this? Batavia. She didn't know my name, but that's in my mind. That's the way that I uh, I understood it. But no, it was I explained to her, you know, started with my grandparents who helped me plant my first garden. But I learned so much online, you know, and it wasn't click on a video. Now I know the thing because that's not just how yeah. the interweb works, you know. Um, so I do by far think it's a good thing. All of the information that's out there, even individual gardeners especially at the level where you can actually ex- talk to someone that no matter where they are i mean we're talking to gardeners in other countries i mean it's that's the coolest and that for me is more about the community than it is learning a thing that's like exchanging yeah. information with someone that's in the garden community um yeah because i mean do other countries have zones like ours i don't know that they're they're like like some european countries also speak to zones but i don't think every country has but do they zone. use our zones yeah, it's still the same like we're still in the same you know 11 and 6 and because the zones are about the temperatures now whether it's commonly used in you know okay. new zealand is a different question versus in the uk it is so um, yeah but you know it ain't summer everywhere you know like you know, so, no it's um, not so yeah but those people that do that kind of stuff you know that are on the other side of the world. Like, I love looking at their stuff. I love talking to them. I love hearing their experiences. But me personally, I have a hard time, like, meshing it with the way I grow. Mm -hmm. Because you don't know where people Mm -hmm. live. Like, you can be like, where do you live? And be like, like, somebody asked me the other day, where do you live? And they were obviously across the Mm -hmm. pond in England or UK. And I was like, I live in the US. Well, that doesn't tell them a damn thing. You know what I mean? And I mean, I'm not going to be like, I live at blah, 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 blah. You know, it's not a Mm -hmm. secret where I live, but I don't generally broadcast it out there. So it's very vague. And I, you know, you tell me you live in Chicago. Like, I don't know where Chicago is when I close Mm -hmm, my eyes. mm -hmm. But if somebody tells me a town right down the road or in my state, then I can kind of figure it out a little bit better. 
You know, so like my state, we have zones five through eight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what zones we have in my state. So it's a big difference mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. So it's um, that's the thing, too. But I think that's the reason why in some parts, because we have a whole separate episode about the good and evil of zones. So we won't go too far into that. But that's the it's like a it level sets some things for those that do use zones um, because you can kind of talk the same language. Um, right. I did not. I, I I know a couple other people in, in your area in North Carolina, um, but I didn't. Where? No, I mean, I'm just, just kidding. Yeah, I'm I'm... <laughs> like, just like the state. Like, um, but I didn't realize how different our weather is. Uh, so yeah. as we've continued to, you know, work together and become friends, I'm kind of like one more state for me to be jealous about, you know, because <laughs> yeah. I like it hot, you know, but, um, but yeah, anyway, I think it's, you know, it's the, um, there are people that know a lot about what they're talking about. There are people out there that could help you a lot. You know, um, we know a lot of things here. There's some things we don't, but we have the desire to help. You know, and we are not the only ones out there, but we won't tell you about the rest of them. Um, <laughs> well, and think about this too. Follower count does not make you an expert in gardening. Mm, mm -hmm, Follower mm -hmm. count makes you an expert in marketing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like I know there's a lady that I follow. I'm not going to mention her name because I don't know if she wants to, but she's got like 60 followers, 70 followers, and she gives great mm -hmm. advice. Mm -hmm. And we talk all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so it's just kind of one of those things like it doesn't really make or break yeah. your garden knowledge. Like that's not a a measure of how much Absolutely. knowledge you have on a certain subject. I was actually. But it's go ahead. it's natural to think that, you know what I mean? Because, oh, they got one hundred and four thousand people watching them. They got it. Well, they might not quite know. You know what I mean? It, you know, some certain certain things. Like, I mean, obviously, if you're if you're harvesting 50 pounds of vegetables a day then yeah, yeah you you know what you're doing yeah. you know there's no doubt about yeah, that yeah i am I'm, I'm spot on i'm trying to jump in here to agree with you um and especially and it also depends on the social media platform too because some yeah. platforms are designed for different things we talk about instagram a lot because <clears> we're on there you know multiple times a week um and that's a great place for visuals Right. You know, so yeah. pictures of a thing, again, doesn't make you an expert in that thing. Now, that's not to say no. that anyone that has a YouTube channel like, you know, Be Better Garden or The Backyard Gardener. Like, you know, that's not to say <laughs> that those places, because they've created a YouTube channel, that they're experts in them either. That's not to say that. Um, no. But there is a different approach you take when you're sharing information you know, in that video, more long format when it comes to social media compared to an Instagram. Um, and, and you'll probably find you have folks that have a lot of people just click a button and say, oh, I'll, next time I'm on Instagram, I want to see what that person shares if they're, you know, they've shared something. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think that um, I was really surprised when I saw how many people share their garden spaces on social media i'm just going to speak generally um and i often think about how many more people that have gardens that never ever are on social media do you know that so i'm going to go off on a tangent for a moment do you know the level of joy that i get when i um get a video like a clip from a friend or a colleague and they're like oh I wanted to show you my aunt's garden or I wanted to show you you know oh this is my yeah. wife and my garden you know and it and I always want to say because they always lead with it's not a Batavia garden and I'm like it's better than a Batavia garden it's your garden um I bring that same energy I know I know it can be a little bit shrieking sometimes but, uh, <laughs> but and I promise you Every time I see one of those videos or pictures of someone, someone else's garden, and these are people I know personally, I promise you I'm making a note and I'm legitimately saying, can you tell me about this? 
yeah, I'm, I've already run out of space to incorporate many ideas, but it doesn't mean I'm not registering them. So there's always something to learn. And these most times aren't people that just started a garden last year. Even if they are, that's even great too. These are people that have gardened for a lifetime. So I don't pass up an opportunity to learn from them. So anyway, I, I, no, you I guess the, the point is that, you know, virtual high fives to all of us that are on some form of social media sharing what we do with our gardens. Uh, but double virtual high fives for those that I guess that's high tens that are gardening and, you know, Facebook and YouTube, who? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. there's plenty of information, which also kind of a side note, get local, man. You know, so there's a lot of information that's at your fingertips when it comes to social media, but there are gardens that are around your area, whether you've noticed them or not, you know, whether it's nurseries, whether it's, you know, garden centers, whether it's uh, some person that has a community garden space, there's a lot of knowledge within your immediate area. I'm going to guarantee you. Um, yeah, so. there definitely is. And I mean, it's important, you know, <laughs> gardening is a weird thing, man, because, uh oh. I just scooted down on my chair, so get yeah. ready. It it's one of those things where it's like you're you're by yourself and you're gardening, and it's not like there's. I mean, there are gardening clubs, but that's not like it's like you know, pool league, dart mm-hmm. league, you know, men's night out at the bowling alley or anything like mm-hmm. that. It's like it's few and far between, yeah. and you know somebody, and it's like I love walking through my neighborhood. And I see all these little gardens and people's yards. They got just a little patch mm-hmm, cut. Mm-hmm. They got their little tomato plant, little little peppers, yeah. you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Not much, just a little bit, you know, so they can get that fresh mm-hmm, tomato every year and they mm-hmm. love it. And I think that's amazing. Yeah. And I think it's great. And those are like, exactly like you said. And that person could be damn near an expert gardener and that's all they have. And you don't yeah. know. They just like growing their shit and they don't care. Yeah. Do you know? You know what Do you I mean? know gardeners that don't really like to talk about gardening? I think it doesn't really come up in conversation unless people already know that you garden. Like every okay, so since the word's gotten out that I do this and the YouTube mm-hmm. channel and the movie and you know all that stuff, when I go somewhere now, people are starting to ask me questions, yeah. and I don't mind talking about it. You know, I mean, people reach out to me on Instagram and they ask me questions and. You know, they DM me and I'm like, yeah, it's, it's fine. You know, I'll ask, I'll answer whatever I can, you know what I mean? And if I don't know, like, like if you've asked me a question and you don't know, you're obviously not going to look it up somewhere mm-hmm. else maybe. So if I don't really know, then I'll confirm sure. it. Cause you know, I have certain resources that I use and I'll come back and I'll tell you, but I'll tell you also like, I don't know, yeah. but if I were you, this is what yeah. I would do. And you know, I like doing that stuff, but it's like, it's kind of like when you, you're a doctor and you walk in and you're like, oh, you're a doctor? Oh, yeah, I got this weird bump on my, um, you know, on my gooch. I need you to look at it, you know? <laughs> Something like that. I was hoping you were going to skip right over the location. I got, I, I was listening like, I keep on going. Just keep on over. Don't, no, don't try to, yeah. There's no way I was going to give up that opportunity. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those. So, like, when I was a mechanic back years ago, a doctor came in. And um, my boss was standing next to me. He's like, oh, you're a doctor? He's like, yeah. He's like, you can ask me one question and only one question. (laughs) And so we stood there for a minute. We looked at each other and he was like, how come when I eat corn, it comes out whole? (laughs) And I was like, that's the only question you want to answer? Since every six-year-old and, you know, your boss, yeah. (laughs) And then he, he ended up saying that the only animal... I believe this this has been years ago now. He said the only animal that can process the corn, I think, is either ants or termites. Interesting. One of the two. Yeah. yeah. So, but that was, I was like, that's, but it's, it's the same idea. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, oh, you garden? Oh, you have a gardening podcast? Well, let me go. Yeah. Well, so, the reason why I ask, that's fine. It's, it's twofold. So, like, at someone asking you about advice or having a question, I have gotten that a bit recently. Like, people I've known over the years, and I guess maybe the way that, you know, I've positioned myself over the last couple of years, people feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, like, you know, I'm, I'm getting the, let me see, let me see this picture, you know, look at this. Um, but the reason why I was asking, I saw an article recently about um, 
you know, things, people from other countries and their observations about things that people do in the U S in America that we think are normal, that really isn't normal to them or anyone else. Um, and one of them was kind of how we just randomly talk to people, you know, you're like at the train station in the grocery store, you know, you're in line somewhere and strike up a conversation and I am you like you, that that's me. That's what I do. And so I thought about that for gardening and I'm sure there are some people that are introverts that maybe don't really like talking to a whole bunch of people anyway. But if I see a garden, like wild horses are going to have to drag me away. Like I'm going up to that gardener and I'm going to say, Hey, how's it going? Right. That's just the way that I am. And I was just thinking to myself, like there's some people that probably don't want that. And that's so now remember, it's just not with like a vegetable garden. I'm, pulling over when I'm driving and like looking at people's flower displays and so every now and again. And I try to be careful and respectful of this every now and again, I'll be so impressed. We'll all take out a camera. And so one day I was doing this and I was actually filming video because it was a design that I was just talking about a friend talking to a friend with. And I didn't notice by the time I got like eight seconds into the video, I saw like the homeowner sitting there and it was just like, Hey, how you doing? I just, I love, you know, now it just seems like it's not genuine, but it always is. Um, anyway. And she didn't care. He didn't. Yeah. Or he didn't. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was a male yeah, gardener. Yeah, yeah, Quite proud of his Shut- uh, flower display. Shout out to all the men out there that garden. We are few and far between that I know of, but at least on social media mm-hmm, we are. Mm-hmm. I have 74% of my followers yeah. are women. I mean, that could so. be because you're such a dashing looking guy. Shit. The way that you pose with a head of cabbage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't be ridiculous. You pose with a head don't of cabbage. Be... I mean, come on. <laughs> hey, look, that was my first successful head of cabbage. I've tried for yeah, three years. Good to on get you. One. Good on you. So, um, there might be another pose coming up soon we never mm-hmm. know are you growing cabbage i speak of nothing okay. else right. ma'am right. well i'm not here to pressure you we don't want that kind of social I, media pressure here oh don't you worry you can't pressure <laughs> me i'm pressureless <laughs> but it's it's you know it's one of those things where it's, it's a very good thing and it can also be a not so good thing and I think, and you know, when I first got on YouTube earlier this year, which I don't know why I waited so long, but I did it. Um, when I was doing my backyard budget ma- mm. makeover, my budget backyard garden makeover series, um, I kept talking about the Pinterest, Pinterest, mm-hmm, Pinterest mm-hmm. garden, Pinterest garden. And um, I was on Pinterest for a while and I had to get off of it mm. because it caused it single handedly caused me the most stress of anything I've ever done in my wow. whole life. Yeah, it was really bad because there was just all these different ideas and stuff. And I would get on there and I would be like, okay, I'm going to do this or I'm going to cook this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this or something. And I would just constantly like I would never be able to decide. And I would just stay on it and look and look and look. And then you'd find all this stuff and then I'm spending money on it. And then I got mad at myself because I'm like. I'm not real like I'm a creative person. I'm not really creating anything. Mm -hmm. I'm just copying Mm -hmm. stuff. So then that added to it and I had, I've, I haven't touched, I was on it for a brief, maybe three, six month period, probably seven years ago and I've never gotten back since so I can't do it because it's too much. And it's with the garden, it's the same thing when you see it, because you know, when you're on social media, you generally, and when I say social media, I mean like Facebook, mm-hmm. Instagram, you generally don't see like garden scenes, at least not in the world mm-hmm, I'm in. You mm-hmm. see harvests. Yeah. You see different plants, yeah. you see people working in gardens, but you don't see like a well set up mm-hmm. scene. Like this is my sitting space yeah. or anything like that. Because when you start looking at that stuff, that's when it becomes daunting. Cause you're like, that's what I yeah. want. But you know that that person probably built that 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years, and has had time to mature and grow yeah. in. And that's something that people don't, understand and I didn't understand for a long time is that things would actually mature and settle into place and that's when you actually get that real look Mm -hmm. like you see in those Mm -hmm. scenes 
So. Yeah, I mean, I remember um, your references to the Pinterest gardens, and I'm a, a fan of Pinterest. And you know what's funny? The way I use it um, for gardening and other things, I have, what do they call them when you save them? Um, I don't know. Pins? Pins, yeah. So when you pin... <laughs> Oh wow! I just no, I didn't just get it. I, I know, yeah. I was just saying, we're done. <laughs> um, so you, I normally go there searching for a thing, you know. So uh, trellising um, melons, I'll go and search for that because. I consume that information much differently than I do if I do a YouTube search or a Google search. There's sometimes I don't want to interact. I just want to look, right? Yeah. I don't want to have to do a bunch of reading. You know? <laughs> yep, nope, I don't always want to read. Uh, I don't really even want the interaction with the video sometimes. I just want to kind of, you know, look through it. And then I don't go to Instagram when I'm in that mood because there's that interaction because I'm a part of that community, you know? So I can't scroll past, you know, a picture that you put out there without commenting on it, you know, if I find it interesting. Uh, so for me, you know, Pinterest is I'm searching out a thing and it's almost um, kind of sit back and, and, and relax a bit. So it's interesting. We have so very different views on that. Uh, when you used to talk about Pinterest gardening or Pinterest gardens, I definitely did receive that as the picture perfect garden. You know, yes. and that is a that is a, a thing. That's a facade. You know, I mean, there's some people out there that keep their just like they may keep their homes like pristine. Right. But gardens are filled in almost all cases with dirt. Right. You know, right. So um, and what comes with dirt? There's two things. I don't know. Weeds and insects. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But when you look at those pictures, you don't mm -mm, see that mm -mm. stuff. And you, it's like, it's kind of like, well, why do I, why am I ever on with yeah. weeds? They didn't have that in that picture. Well, you know what, what though, I but I, I want to speak on this just a little bit because remember in my two different garden areas, I've talked about this and I'll continue to talk about it. I'm very intentional about what I put and how I maintain my front yard garden versus my backyard garden. Um, right. And there have been years where like I've had to in my backyard garden, take a stick and poke at things to make sure that there wasn't going to be something that <laughs> jumped out, you know? So, yeah. Um, but I, my commitment to my neighbors in my neighborhood is not to have my front yard garden space go wild like that. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't, but I'm saying for me, I'm very intentional about having a very neat front yard garden. The only thing I ever leave up there would be like, you know, um, milk crates because that's how I roll. Everyone needs a milk crate in your right. garden. If you don't have one, get one. Um, I dude, mine disappeared. I was actually going to warn against that though because it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be careful, man. Everyone knows that everyone should have a milk crate in their garden, so protect yours at all cost. Um, and at the beginning of the season, when I'm collecting mulch from you know my mulch spot, when I drag it out of my truck and drag it into the front yard they're in big plastic bags and i hate that i leave it up there but it's like at some point i have to balance it's not realistic for me to drag it somewhere else to ultimately just pull it back no. up there so i try to i mean you gotta yeah, leave stack it, it up nicely you know line it up um and then you may have a white bucket every now and again because i use buckets a lot um but it's yeah. you know my backyard may have garden tools strewn about you know but i don't do that kind of thing so if I'm anywhere near a Pinterest garden. It would be in my front yard, my backyard. It's I, I give myself a lot of lot of room there, you know, to let a garden be a garden. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it's important that you, you know, especially in a front yard garden. You, I I mean, I personally think you do need to keep that mm -hmm. tidier, you know, than your backyard, yeah. just for out of respect for the people around you. And then on one hand, I'm like, who gives a shit? It's my yard. I paid mm -hmm. for it. Like. You don't like it, suck it. But yeah, yeah. But let you know. Let's you know, not go too far. I just spent three minutes, but let's not go too far because it's a whole other episode. Yeah. Oh, is yes. it okay? <laughs> yeah. Um. But I mean, that's just the yeah. whole thing. So, and it's like when you look at these Pinterest gardens and you see like the absolute perfection, mm -hmm. you know, and you're looking at it, and they've. I mean, have you ever looked into like an architect for a space? No. Like I've never like scouted one out. No. Yeah. Hold, hold up your hand. 
I'd cut that bitch off to pay for it. That's how expensive it is. <laughs> it is insane. But they come uh-huh. in, you know, for like a real legit like land mm-hmm. art. I guess it's called a land architect. Mm-hmm. They come in and they'll be like, okay, you have this amount of shade here. And they give you like detailed drawings oh, wow, okay. and stuff. I mean, that's the thing. You might be dealing with that. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? When you look at these pictures and it's just not realistic. So that being said, I definitely look at stuff. I'm like, oh, you know what? I like that look. You know, especially like now that I'm into flowers, mm-hmm. like I'm all of a sudden like this big, crazy flower guy and, you know, just other plants and designing with it. But you don't know everything. Mm-hmm. So you need to find out what makes you comfortable yeah. and then kind of give yourself boundaries. Right. So like, for for instance, I was shopping for bulbs last mm-hmm. night and you can get all kinds of bulbs. So you know, know what you want. So for instance, I need something that's deer resistant, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. deer resistant air quotes, if you're just listening. (laughs) Um, but I need varying heights and I don't want anything that's overly complicated to grow. I don't want to stake anything up. I literally want a bulb to come up, do its thing and go away. And that being, that is my boundary right there. You know what I mean? Like I have those set for me. So when I go look for them, then I know what to get. And then just design it, like have fun with it. Like use things as, as inspiration, but don't try and copy them because then you're going to get down to be like, well, I need this wood chair that's really old and antique and weathered. I'm okay with you. Then- I'm okay with you wanting to copy an element, but it's, yes. it's, it's very difficult for you to do a for a garden for you to do a from front to back you know from you know one step one to ten the exact thing and chances are you're probably not going to enjoy it so much so you know I, i actually follow on um like staging sites like i love to look at pictures of things like homes being you know staged i know it's not real no one's living in it but i think it's super cool and i always take a little bit of a piece of an idea like oh i don't like this i do like this so again it's you know, there's some stuff going on in this noggin here um but when it comes to your pinterest gardens it is it's a photo shoot in a lot of these instances and so yeah. with that said you're not going to have weeds like you said you're not going to have dead or dying plants you know everything right. is going to be at its optimum for the photo shoot growth height width, you know um and you know take a piece of it and leave the rest this is that's my model when it comes to this kind of stuff um and i do think that in addition to sharing what we do in our garden space with the community and with others um we sh- i share it to give people ideas if they want to take them you know if i'm putting something out online you have to expect someone's going to try it someone somewhere you yeah know? and that's no, all good. i'm just saying like don't stress yourself out mm-hmm, over mm-hmm. recreating yeah, that design because yeah. that goes back that's to the I mean. top of what we talked about you just never know the circumstances that design w- r- was created under you talked about how long that garden could have been in place this, this could be their eighth year of this shrub or something you know right. um or the it's California, you know, <laughs> like that's the reason why that thing is flourishing compared to what we have here. So, you know, it's like, you want to play a game? Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. Not really, but I'm going to go along with it. That was not genuine. That was bullshit, that was, man. That wasn't Come on. genuine that was... excitement. So close your eyes and imagine your perfect Pinterest garden and, and, and describe it. So it would have, um, solar lights, I don't want to pay any more of my electric bill. So, you know, you have the post in any corner of your garden. So it would have those because I really want to be able to sit and enjoy the garden at night. It would have two seating areas, one that would be away from everything that's growing and one would be right in the middle of everything that's growing. Um, It would have different beds. And when I say beds, I don't mean like my 14 beds, but like different growing areas, if you will. Um, where I'd grow different types of things, whether it's flowers or veggies and so on. Um, and it would be rooms like you've described before to us on the podcast. Um, I'm going to open my eye now. Okay. That's it. So, okay. So that was what you, if you built it on Pinterest would mm-hmm. be right. No, that, that was me no, building saying- it in my yard, but. Yeah. So like if I close my eyes and I'll tell you what I imagine is something I would see on Pinterest. Okay. Okay. 
So I see a a close up sh- photo of an old antique wooden chair with a little wood table and a candle on it, and it's surra- It's on top of a circular brick patio. And then in the back, there's a wall of a green shrub with white flowers coming down in pink. And then there must be two poles behind it because there's one behind the shrub with the big lantern lights coming down on it, like Christmas light type deals coming down. And then somewhere there's going to be like a little script writing or something like that. And then there's going to be like ivy on the bottom of it on the as ground cover with little purple flowers and you see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And it's like, as I see these things, like I cl- I can just see yeah, yeah. exactly the image and you see it all mm-hmm. the time. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, you know, and there, um, there's this group, this, um, uh, group that I was uh, invited to recently when it comes to enjoying outdoor spaces, I was invited to it by someone that I know personally, after I posted a couple of pictures about my outdoor space. And, um, you know, just kind of randomly, hey, you know, I am in maintenance mode and I'm hanging out and things are great. And so I'm sure she invited me saying like, oh, I'm sure you'd enjoy this. Right. And so um, like the spaces that like these are Pinterest level backyards. I'm just like everyone has a pool. Like, you know, like um, and so there have actually been it's a pretty new um forum and there have been comments around like where do you all live and what's your budget for these things because there are a lot of people that have these like fabulous spaces that you know indoor pool outdoor pool like it's this big extravagant thing and then there are a lot of people that don't either have the space the means the creativity any of those things or all of those things and there was a moment where i was like Maybe I don't, this, this, is, this ain't that what I'm doing here. Ain't that, you know? And so, right. um, you know, I had that, that the reaction that you had when it came to Pinterest, like, I really love the space that I'm in right now. Right. Like right. I think about kind of what's next for me in, you know, future years. Um, and Pinterest, Instagram, any of those sites, like I don't, doesn't matter how big or small a garden is. I don't have that garden envy. Um, but when I was looking at some of these backyards, I'm just like, like, I, I mean, there's no room for a real pool in my backyard. Well, actually my neighbor, a couple of doors down, they do, they did have an, um, above ground pool, but that's another story. Um, so like there's some things that just aren't realistic in my space. Um, and right. I had to balance the idea of how I use my space compared to how, this person uses their space and that's what's really critical. Like how do you plan on using it and enjoying it? And then that let me take a step back and say, this quite literally feels no different than Pinterest. Pinterest. I can look at these pictures and some of the comments that the people share and just enjoy it and be like, Oh, that's super cool. You know, but not compared to my little itty bitty front porch where I can basically get two plants and a chair. You know, without, you know, interrupting right. the mail person when she comes to deliver the mail, you know. Um, well, does it cause you to see something and want to obtain something that literally you're not going to be able to do because of space or money mm-hmm. or anything like that? You know, is that what you think it's doing? Yeah, so the initial reaction was, um, like, I saw a couple of things that were similar to my design from, like, a patio perspective, right? You know, like, right. you know, all right, you have a nice chair or whatever. Um, but everything else, so more than probably 90% of it was, like, I don't even know what city or state or country you live in because the houses by me don't even have that space, let alone right. kind of those features. And so it wasn't... It wasn't me saying, should I redesign my space? Because that's not, again, this ain't that. But it did, it was that moment of like, I need to reevaluate, like, you know, my my living style. Like, I I want to, like, look, I want a forest like Ben has in his backyard, you know. Um, Right. But I mean, we're talking like, I'm waiting on the airstrip to be put into some of these spaces. Um, and, And it was I, I, I mean, I've, I looked at and read dozens of comments or dozens of um, posts, and these really seem to come from genuine places, people that were just proud of their space. It wasn't, 
you know, of I don't course. think they were watermarked. I don't think these are pictures from, you know, pulled off of the interweb. Um, and it was just like, you know, that it just may not be the season in my life for that, you know, because then I kept on thinking like, where would I put my garden there without interrupting that design? Because again, this ain't that, you know what I'm saying? Um, well, see that, and I don't want to say for sure it wasn't, but more than likely they did not design that themselves. Maybe not, yeah. That was probably more than likely designed by somebody for mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. So what you have now is you don't have that flavor that you can add to it for yourself. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? So like when you and I build our spaces or our gardens, like that's mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm talking to you listeners. That's you. That's your yeah. spot. You made that. Yeah. You know what I mean? You designed that. You changed it. You tinkered with it every year. And that's it, it speaks about who mm-hmm. you are. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, seriously, look at mine. Like, mine's simplistic. You know what I mean? Like, that says a lot about me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Versus yours is, you know, I don't know. What is yours? Like, like, how do you, would you describe it in one word? How would you describe your garden? Other than beautiful, pretty, or wonderful. Compact. Compact. So does that describe you as a person? I think trying to get a lot of things in does, you know. Yeah. So, yeah so hoarding <laughs> <laughs> you know i felt like this was the a special episode on the backyard gardens podcast we're speaking to you and I, you know i felt i wasn't getting teary but i felt like this was like a heart to heart and then you call me a hoarder like i need to be on a lifetime <laughs> show like come on yeah don't make me no, no, spit no, water yeah, on the mic. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I saw a picture. Um, it's like a meme. Like, uh, <laughs> who knew that one of the most difficult decisions of, uh, of being an adult was looking at a box and trying to figure out if she throw it, throw it away or not? Because that box is a really good box. You know, I'm butchering the uh, the meme, but it was like, I didn't even comment because I just didn't even want to like point the finger at myself. But you know how many boxes I look at and say, sure that I can have, I can reuse this. Dude, you want to hear something crazy? <laughs> Since we're talking about hoarding. No, you're talking about Monday hoarding tra- for the record, but go on. <laughs> okay. So Monday is trash mm-hmm. day and the people in my neighborhood throw out the best stuff. So every Monday we're like, let's go take mm-hmm. a walk. Mm-hmm. It's been a little slim lately, yeah. but like around the first yeah. of the year, it lights up. Boy, you. you get some good yeah, stuff. Man. And I, you know, I did, I decluttered my, my house years ago and I did this. I mean, I just got rid of everything. It didn't matter how nice it was. If I didn't want it, boom, but, um, it's easy to collect yeah, stuff. So, yeah. but I mean, it does, it does describe your personality or something mm-hmm. about you. And when you have somebody else design it, I kind of feel like you take away that personal mm-hmm. touch. Mm-hmm. But you, you know, know what? what I, I mean? feel like some people, they don't need to be the creator. Some people want to no. walk into a space and say, OK, great. Perfect. Um, I, you know, it's. But is that person or a gardener? I don't know. That's a really good question. I'm trying to think about. I'm going through my head and my, and I, I know we're on the podcast and it's like dead silence. Yeah, you can't have dead air. <laughs> I, I was thinking about like going through the Rolodex of people that I see on YouTube and Instagram and various garden sites. And it feels like so many of them either they're in their garden creating the space or, I mean, they may have help with it, you know, but this is something that they've created. They kind of just don't walk into this garden, backyard garden area that's been built for them. Now there, there probably are people that, you know, do it because oh, there, yeah. I mean, obviously there are businesses that do that. Um, I do think that the level of adjustments that you make in your garden uh, doesn't bode well for like your backyard design for lounging. Because in a lot of cases, once you right. do that, like it's meant to be static, like, all right, it's designed and you'll enjoy it for the next 10 years, you know, versus like you said, well, you're no, tweaking I think your like garden, if- you know, every year in some cases. So if somebody, like if I was going to put in a lounging spot in my yard, well, first of all, I'd probably try and build it just because I'm an idiot and I think I can do it when I really can't. But in all reality, if I could afford it, I would have somebody come in and say, this is how I would approach. I would say, okay, I want to have somewhere to sit, but it's very important 
that on the edge here and here, I can have a garden bed here and here and line it with flowers or bushes or something, you know, some kind of vegetation and kind of have that space all like made so that I can focus on doing everything else. So I can see that as being yeah, something. Yeah, you know? I um, I don't know if I could. I don't know if I. So one of the reactions I didn't have was the, oh, I can't believe I didn't think of this. Or I mean, it was really by like the size and how extravagant some of the features were, um, and because I, I feel like for me, I don't hang a lot of things on my walls. Because I am right. constantly moving things around. Like I this past weekend, after I was done, you know, on the grill for hours and for whatever reason, the mood struck me and I moved my living room furniture around. Now that, I mean, we're not going to get into a therapy session where there's some you know, inner child in me that never feels settled. And that's the reason. I don't know. But I'm constantly moving things around and my garden is no different. When I talk about every year that fresh dirt gives me like, another at bat like I get a clean slate I mean that you know so um I I rotate my crops only because I want to try something different in a new area like but you rotate them whatever I'm trying to (laughs) (laughs) I mean I guess I mean I, I think that's the beauty though is there is no one type of way to build a garden. No matter what the interweb or social media says, You, my, my garden is semi-homemade. Uh, almost all of the things that I've done have been my creation, with the exception of the couple of things that are just too big of a job for me. Like building right. the deck out, rebuilding the deck out was too big of a job for me in the backyard. So, you know, right. hire someone well, to do it. Well, that's the same thing. It's like if you're, you know, if you're building a lounging area, which a deck mm-hmm. is essentially... Um, you know, it's too big of a job for you. So I get that. But to have somebody come in and I mean, you, you got to understand too, we're not talking about, you know, having somebody design trees yeah, and yeah, bushes. Yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. We're talking about like a literal mm-hmm. garden, albeit a flower garden or whatever. You know what I mean? And I've seen some flower gardens that people have designed, like professionals have designed and they are mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. Just absolutely amazing. But they cost yeah, a fortune yeah. to make. And it's just something that I'm not willing to pay for. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Um, what else? What else? I think the Pinterest piece was the last piece. I'm glad you brought it up because I almost forgot about it that I wanted to cover when it comes oh, to Oh, I wasn't going to forget about it. I wasn't going to forget. <laughs> That's the last piece I wanted to cover well, when it came to social media gardening. Now it's time for Batavia <gasps> to give you. The recipe of the day. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, good people. So this is a time of year where I'm trying to figure out how to use all of the tomatoes that I grew. <laughs> it's a super simple, fresh, raw dish. Uh, This is, I'm going to call it a classic because I've done it like since I've had my first garden. Cucumber, tomato, and onion if you like salad. Um, It's really a mixture of those three ingredients. I have a special ingredient that I'll mention in just a sec. Um, So I'd say take for like if you're, you know, party of four, use either one really big cucumber or two small cucumbers. Um, I do two to three tomatoes. You can do cherry tomatoes, but I like to use your regular whole beef steak or just your round tomatoes. So I take two or three of tomatoes, dicing them up and, um, just a little bit bigger than bite sized pieces. You can also dice the cucumber versus slice is my preference. And then I do your onions and I use red onions if I have them, like shaving them almost really thin layers of onions. So you're going to put all of those ingredients into a bowl. And my favorite is always to add a marinade. And so you're going to use the recipes I've seen call for like two tablespoons of olive oil, but I'm going four. You know, so four tablespoons of olive oil, and then you're going to add 
maybe a tablespoon of vinegar for that acid. And you can use any vinegar you have, regular white vinegar. You can use, um, you know, um, apple cider vinegar. You can use a red wine vinegar. It's all the same. You can use a balsamic vinegar. I've never done it. I don't know if I'd recommend it, but I guess you could use it. Um, So you're going to mix that in with salt and pepper to taste. So you're basically kind of dumping this all into a bowl, salt and pepper to taste. And I'd use some fresh herbs if you have them. I'm going to go with parsley because it's Ben's favorite. So it's not only a garnish, it is for seasoning. Go ahead. How dare you? (laughs) Or perhaps instead of parsley, use dill. Because we've talked quite a bit about how dill is uh, the forgotten child of herbs. Um, So mix it all together. Put it in the fridge. Let it chill for at least 30 minutes. Um, I keep it in the refrigerator if you don't eat it all in one sitting for up to two days the consistency changes and the kind of texture and flavor changes if it goes any further than that. Um, But that's your cucumber, tomato, and onion salad. Oh, wait, special ingredient. What is it? Avocado. Now, this is special because I don't always want to spend my avocado on just anything, right? You know, it's kind of like, I'm just not going to add avocado to, let's say, watermelon, as someone suggested recently. Did you try I it? I actually am going to try it today because I'm glad I didn't do when you prompted me to because I had the watermelon, but the avocados, you know how that goes. They had gone bad over the course of the podcast episode. Yeah. Um, but add some avocado in. I'd only add that as you're about to eat it. I wouldn't even bother with letting it chill just because of how mushy you can get. Um, but it does add that kind of creaminess that avocado often does. So that is it. There are a whole bunch of takes on that recipe, but that's one of my favorites. And that is Batavia giving a fruit recipe. Thank you very much, Batavia, I, for your fruit recipe of the day. I was on my way upstairs before we recorded this, thinking about this recipe, and I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. Um, but that's all you're going to get from I'm me looking, from fruit. No more. No more. Really? I mean, maybe. <laughs> I'm not anti-fruit. So what is it? I mean... Most of that was fruit. Cucumbers aren't fruit. Onions aren't fruit. The tomato is considered a fruit, I know. I think cucumbers are a fruit because it has the um, seeds oh. in the fruit. Oh. Someone tell us. We're not going to Google it. Is cucumber? I just Googled is that it. A, is, is this a fruit salad? Did I, did I stumble upon a fruit salad? <laughs> yeah, technically you may have. I, you know, I mean, come on. Like the diagram they have here. Oh, there's never mind. It's complicated. Let's just leave it at that for now. Because there's botanical, informal, and oh, non-formal. Grief. And there's a person yeah. that's uh, going on the wrong side of the street, looking at my front yard garden. <laughs> <laughs> so it's um that's I like raw recipes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I it like has raw. that, um, I mean, the the um, vinegar gives it that kick, you know, because, I mean, it's acid, right? You know, so it's one of my favorites. Um, and, again, it only needs a little bit of a chill on it, man. Those flavors start to meld and mend. It's one of my favorites, and I have to be careful because I could just eat it and eat it and eat it. Yeah. So. It's, uh, it's officially pouring down rain oh, here. Well. Welcome. We need it. Yeah, yeah. we need it. So, yeah. Um, Social media. Do you think we offended people today? I thought we may, but I don't think we did. You don't no, think so? I think, I mean, I think there are a whole list of episodes we have that we're prepared to offend people, but I don't think this ended up being one of them. Um, okay. I mean, it wasn't a PSA, uh, you know, it was just kind of, you know, it's all, an elephant in the room, maybe even. Yeah, I think it's an elephant in the room. I think it is. So. It's cool. I'm glad that we talked about it, though, because it's, it's weighed heavy on me for months, as you know. And I do think that especially with people who are just getting into gardening, it can be a tough yeah. thing, you know, to, to kind of get into. So, Well, um, I mean, I think the last thing I want to say is please visit us on our social media sites for gardening. Sorry, I just hit like a nail myself. <laughs> that was a bad episode for that, Batavia. That was a really bad episode for that. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, you know, take advice, learn a little bit, 
but do your own yeah. research. Like always do your own research. Like be in it to win it, man. Knowledge is power. Make yourself have the knowledge. Yeah. Give it to yourself. Learn about it. Get an old book. You know, or there's a whole like that, different so. group of people that we haven't even touched on, really. Entertainment, man. You know, some of these garden channels and, you know, these Instagram pages, these social media sites, there are a bunch of people that don't have gardens, don't really want gardens, but like looking at them. So, you know, kudos yeah. to you guys. Well, so, or people who can't have mm -hmm, gardens. Mm -hmm. You know, you just live somewhere where you just literally yeah. can't, or you can only have one plant. Um, you know, people and and shout out to my people in, with community yeah. gardens. For whatever reason, you're in a community garden. I think it's awesome that you're in them. Um, you're you're finding a way to garden when maybe for some reason you couldn't. I think that's great. So shout out to all my peoples with a community garden. That's and a that's an amazing. Should I thing. apologize to those that have community garden spaces that I stalk, like? I've never met a garden I didn't want to stop at. Like, I actually walk well, into community gardens, like saying, I'm just here looking, you know, just not to step on any toes. Like, I'm not here to, you know, harvest someone else's food. But I just love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. You know what I think? And I hate that this is at the end of the episode. And I want to spend about three minutes talking about this it. is um, with the community garden. I think the cool thing is you're there to garden, but you're also there with other people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You are not only are you gardening in the community, yeah. but you are a garden community by doing that. And I would venture to say people who garden in community gardens can learn a lot more, a lot yeah. faster than people who can't. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. There's um really cool. Sometimes, you know, the life of a gardener is lonely. And if you have, Did you, it and, is, it yeah, is. And if you have a space where other people are in that space at the same time doing the same things, like, can you imagine? Oh my gosh, this has nothing to do with social media gardening, and this really should be for a garden update episode. But I can't help myself. My neighbor next door, before I moved here, had had gardens, vegetable gardens, done a lot of flowers, and as long as I've lived in this space, she hasn't. Like, she has her roses that comes back; they come back every year, but that's it. Um, and this year, and I think she's like, I, didn't, I haven't asked her why, because it's really not, you know, my business why. But this year she's growing vegetables. She's planting more flowers. Well, we were talking this morning and, um, you know, if I say good morning, well, it could be anyone. But we were talking about her hostas that were coming in. So I said that to say, like, um, we always chat back and forth and half for a, more than a decade that I've lived here, but this is now a next level of our conversation, right? You know, so we have that community just over the fence now, um, which is super cool. You know, I'm only right. I have like eight more people to convert, eight more neighbors, so I'm well on my way now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, shout out to those in community gardens, and you know, don't get it twisted. What we're doing, I mean, it's a privilege, you know, we're we're very fortunate to have the space and the means to do what we're doing with creating gardens. And there's some people that just don't have that, you know, and there's some people that could do it, but just say, hey, that ain't my thing right now. And I'm cool with them, too. Yeah, there's a somebody I follow. She is um, we talk back and forth a lot and she has fought really hard to have a garden mm -hmm. this year. She has no money that I know um, from what I remember from our conversations and she just got her first tomato pepper and something yeah. else and some flowers, I believe. And she's, she's killing it, man. Yeah, She's killing it. You know what I'm saying? And if you're listening to this, you know who you are, but your profile is private. So I'm not going to give your name out, but you know who you are and you're doing a good job. So mm -hmm. Keep up the good work. What he said. But I mean, what, what you know. he said, because he, you know what? Now this is a game to you. Now you're saving. There's what? certain moments you're finding where I feel like I'm at my strongest and I'm charging ahead. And then you drop a little nugget. And then like, like I am angry about you, like getting my eyes wet here. <laughs> like <laughs> That's yeah, your problem. Man, you know, this is my problem. You're just not fair. But that is, and this is a perfect way to close it because that's why I like, the social yeah. media aspect, I like 
let's just stick with the social yeah. media aspect for the most part is because of that, because you do have those moments. And where would, I mean, how you know? many other times there are not that many other times you're going to get that experience other than through social media. I'm getting the experience through my neighbor, but it's been 13 years. Right. You know, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. Dedicating it so, to her. Nicely. There done. it is. This, this one's mm-hmm. for you. And you're you're a hairdresser, so that should yeah, help yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good on you. But um, anyways, everybody, keep it real. We will. Um, we're gonna go get on social media right Why now. Why not? I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then just stay safe. Don't wear your mask in your car when you're alone. You're not gonna catch the coronavirus by yourself. And um, other than that, you good? I'm good. We'll holler at you guys later. See ya. I hope you enjoyed our conversation today. You can find us at Backyard Gardens the Movie on Facebook and Backyard Gardener on Instagram. And YouTube is Backyard Gardener where I'm doing videos showing cooking and building gardens and gardening tips, all kinds of good stuff. And you can find Batavia at... You'll find me on Instagram at B underscore Better Garden. And then you'll find me on Facebook, same name. And then I'm also over on YouTube at Be Better Garden. I am sharing hashtag garden joy every chance I get. I hope you enjoy. So if you have any questions, hit us up on all of our platforms anywhere you want. And we will be more than happy to help you with what you can. And again, thanks for listening. And we will see you guys next time. Cut. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in.